Girl Scouts in this video participated in our Council's STEM Expo in Cyberspace. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. The first step of this project was to attend a Zoom meeting where they learned how to make a research poster or complete the steps of a science experiment. They were encouraged to find a science topic that interested them and do the necessary research to learn about that topic. Their imagination was their only limiting factor. From research projects on horses and learning about birds in flight, to experiments about dice, cookies, snakes, and DNA, these girls did some amazing science. We had 55 Girl Scouts representing 22 councils across the country. Daisy Strew Seniors do a fantastic job on their STEM projects. I invite you to sit back and enjoy this video. Yours and Girl Scouts, Rank Summer Day, STEM Director. Hi, my name is Abby and I belong to the Council of Eastern Pennsylvania. And in Girl Scouts, I've learned that baking is science. I love to bake. So I want to try the original Girl Scout cookie recipe. Girl Scouts has the original cookie recipe on their website, but they don't say whether the butter should be cold, softened, or melted. My experiment is, how does the butter temperature affect the cookie? My hypothesis is that the one with the cold butter would look neater than the one with the melted butter, and the one with the melted butter would crack. I tried one batch of melted and one batch of cold. Our cookies are almost funny. I chose to mark my cookies with silver and gold. The silver is the cold butter and the gold is the melted butter. The gold, the gold is smoother and wider than the silver. And the silver is rougher and taller than the gold. Either way, they taste great. Start with your name. Hello, I am Elena. I am a junior from San Jacinto Council, and this is my poster on birds because I think they're very fascinating because of the way that they fly. There's not a lot, not a lot of animals that can fly. And I learned that there are different types of ways that they can lift off other than just the simple dive down and fly and they come off the ground and fly. There are they also the tiny ones they have that have shorter and pointier tips, they can fly faster than the ones with bigger, broader wings. And um the one birds fly in a V shape because the wind can just It'll just brush on the side of them and flow off and it will make them aerodynamic. I really enjoyed this research because I learned how flying works. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lily and I'm from Troop 64125. My question is which air paper airplane can go the farthest? I pop, um, paper airplane A has vented wings, paper airplane B has a vented tail. My hypothesis is that paper airplane B will go the farthest because the tail is bent, which will make it go a little bit faster. My data is that paper airplane A went three, went three feet, three times, and one time four feet. Paper airplane B went four feet all along. So in conclusion, B or paper airplane goes the farthest because of the tail. Thank you for watching. Now let me show you my air the airplanes. This is paper airplane A, as you can see right there. It says A. Um this this is the wings over here. You can see it a little bit, it's kind of hard. And paper airplane B. See the B and the vented tail. Thank you for watching. Bye. 
Hey guys, my name is Camilla and I'm a senior Girl Scout from the Girl Scouts of Greater Los Angeles. My question is, why will a baseball float in the ocean? What you need to know is that every object has forces that are pressing on all sides of it. So there are forces on the top of the baseball, on the sides of the ball, and on the bottom of the ball. So the force that is pushing that ball downward or on top of the ball is called a gravitational pull, which means that gravity from the Earth is trying to pull that ball downwards. The forces on either side of the ball are balanced or equal to each other, which means that they don't really affect whether the ball will float or sink. Lastly are the forces on the bottom of the ball that's pushing that ball upwards. That is called the buoyant force. Another important thing that you need to know is an object will sink if the object's weight is greater than the buoyant force. So here I need to calculate two main things, the buoyant force and the weight of the baseball. So I found out that the buoyant force is 2.22 newtons and the weight of the baseball is 1.421 newtons. Now that I know the buoyant force and the weight of the baseball, I can tell that the buoyant force is much greater than the weight of the baseball. So therefore, according to what we learned earlier about whether an object will sink or float, I can conclude that a baseball will float in the ocean. Thank you for listening. Begin. Hi, my name is Sonia Kay. I'm in 96516 and I live in West Milford, New Jersey. I'm a rising cadet. Today I will be attempting to do the exploding bag. So you will need vinegar, baking soda, a tissue, a bag, and warm water in that bag. So as you can see, I already have the baking soda and the tissue. And now I'm going to pour some vinegar into my bag. Make sure you have a little bit of water. Not too much, that will slow the chemical reaction. So now I'm going to crumple my tissue up that has the baking soda in it. Put it in the bag. So you want to do this and then seal the bag. You want to do this as quick as possible. And then you might see that this thing is like puffing up, and that's the chemical reaction. It's going to explode. It's going to explode. So it's going to explode since it's the exploding bag. The pressure is it, and it is coming down. And thank you for watching. Hope you have fun with this experiment. Hi, I'm Kylie, and I'm with the Greater Los Angeles chapter. My experience, experiment is going is growing gummy bears. Uh, um, this is the Diet Coke grew the largest and the ickiest. The so these are the liquids I have: Diet Coke, salt water, vinegar. Uh, water uh, and sugar water. 
The diacoke grew the largest of all and the ickiest. The salt water grew um, big, but not as big as this one. The vinegar is an essence, so it kind of made the gummy bear disappear. Like the gummy bear bear, but not the real gummy bear, not the part of it. It just made the shape of the gummy bear go away. And the water made it grow like this one. They're almost the same height and length. And the salt water, sugar water, made it um, clear. Hi, my name is Gabrielle. I am a junior and I am part of the San Jacinto Council. I did the apple accusation experiment. I used sugar, lemon, honey, salt water, apples, and an apple slicer. My prediction was that the lemons would keep it the freshest. I put four apples in four different liquids to see how it would affect the accusation in the apples. Then I observed I then I observed the apples after three minutes and again after six minutes. The conclusion was that the apple and the lemon juice looked the freshest. Thank you for watching. Um see you later. Bye. Hi, I'm Sophia. And I'm from the Girl Scouts Heart in New Jersey Council, and I am a senior. For my experiment, I used this dice. I decided to test to see if one hand rolls different numbers than another hand. This is the rolls I did on my right hand. This is a total of 60 rolls. I'll give you some time to look at it. These are the rolls for my left hand. Again, it is 60 rolls. So I'll give you some more time to look at this one. As my conclusions from this experiment, I saw that if I wanted to roll a higher number, I should roll with my left hand. And if I wanted to roll a lower number, I should roll with my right hand. I learned that each hands have different probabilities. The highest number on my left hand was six with 21.7% and the highest number on my right hand was five with 21.3%. The odd and even numbers have an evenly split probability on each hand. I use the information from the other experiment to see if I have a higher probability of rolling a different number on with any hand. This will show if I have a number that is more likely to be rolled than another. This is a chart. As you can see, all the numbers are pretty much equal, so no number has really more chance. This is the dice I used. This is the paper I use to keep score. How does a person talk? Kristen. How does it, my question, how does a person talk? Step one, our brain forms a thought and how that thought is said in words. Step two, air comes from the lungs through the diaphragm. Step three, air moves through the voice box and out of the mouth. Step four, we form the sounds with our tongue, teeth, lips, and roof of the mouth. My diagram. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jules and I did research on horses to see if they would make good pets. What kind of food do horses eat? Grass, hay, grains, oats, fruits and vegetables, and fresh water every day. How much space do horses need? About three acres to get enough exercise. What is a stable for? A sleeping horse, feeding your horse, and grooming your horse. How often does a horse need to be groomed? Only groom your horse before you ride your horse. Ride usually about two to three times a week. What tools do you need to ride training a horse? Saddle, bridle, stirrups, halters, reins, bits, harnesses, 
more tingles, and breast pains. How often do you change your horse's horseshoes? Every two to three months. How would a horse be a good pet? It would be very entertaining and it would be a lot of fun. You also would have someone to play with. You would be able to ride it. Hi, my name is Anai Martinez and I'm from Chu 147041. And my question is, if I draw in the middle of my bowl with a dry erase marker and put a little bit of water, will my drawing float? Well, don't worry. That's what we're about to figure out today. I'm going to be drawing a little fish. Then I'm going to put a little bit of water. I would put it like in case I accidentally leave it open. And then there it is. It's okay if it breaks, but now you know it works. Well, because when you make your drawing on the surface of a smooth plate or tray, the solvent of water that dissolves the ink ingredients will evaporate. This leaves the color pigment behind on the surface. And because the ink is lighter than the water, and that's why it could flow. Bye. It was really fun. I think you should give it a try. Bye. Um, hi guys, I'm Danielle and I'm doing an egg experiment with these two cups have salt in it. This one has salt, half salt <coughs> and half plain water. This one has no salt, it's just plain water. This one has salt. Water. It sinks because the, it doesn't have any salt to push it up. And here it's floating because it the the it's pushing the it up the egg up. It's at the middle a little at the middle because. It's pushing it a little bit up since it has some water, half water, plain water, and half salt, and it's lifting it up. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi, I'm Sydney. I wanted to know, can snakes smell the difference? For this experiment, I used my pet snake noodle and three fruits. At first, I put them in a box with no fruits. Then I put them in a box with one, then three. I recorded each for 15 seconds and counted how many times his tongue flicked. These are my results. When I had zero fruits, he flicked his tongue out 11 times. When I had one fruit, he flicked his tongue out 10 times. And when I had three fruits, he flicked it out 12 times. Here's what the experiment looked like. I concluded that snakes can smell the difference. Because noodles smell 12 times when there was three fruits in there, and only 10 because there were one, but that was because he was trying to escape at the same time. So I can conclude that snakes can smell the difference. Goodbye. Here's my research poster. Zoe and I'm a brownie. My council is Greater Los Angeles and my science experiment is ha, do some m and colors um, go, um, melt faster than others. So to get so my hypothesis is the darker colors are gonna melt faster than the lighter colors. For the darker colors there's red, blue, and brown. So to get started, you will need a ruler, 
a pencil, a paper plate, a round ball, glue, and M&Ms. This is what it should look like when it's all set it up. So we put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and nothing happened. And then we put it in for another 30 seconds, the brown and the blue started to melt. Then in a few more times, finally, for 180 seconds, they all started to melt, including the, the darker colors melted faster than the lighter colors. This is my end result. Hi, what's your name? Caitlin. And how old are you? Five. And what kind of Girl Scout are you? A daisy. And what is your project about today? All about bunnies. What do you want to tell us about bunnies? The cute that you push on your poop. What do they have lots of? Babies. And what's one last thing? They poop. All right. Can you say your name again? Caitlin. Thank you. Bye. Go. Hi, my name's Avery. I'm from Troop 21513 of Girl Scouts of Central and Southern New Jersey. So for my experiment, I did which piece of bread could grow the most bacteria. So I have antibacterial bread, Oops. Um, and I had antibacterial on my hands, and I wiped my hands all over this piece of bread. And I have soap, and I washed my hands with soap and water, and I rubbed my hands all over this piece of bread, and I had unwashed hands and washed and wiped my hands all over this piece of bread. So it was a failed experiments but it might always work who knows, what how, did, who knows how to grow bacteria <laughs> what did you think was going to happen which one did you think was going to grow so, the most bacteria i thought that the unwashed was going to grow the most bacteria and i thought the antibacterial was going to grow the least bacteria but like you said failed it failed and that's okay because sometimes things don't work out the way that you yeah. planned right okay so regardless Always wash your hands. Always wash your hands. And stay safe. Okay. Thanks. Hello, my name is Olivia. I'm a second year brownie. And I'm a Girl Scout from the troops of the Desert Southwest. My experiment was on the density of liquids. Density is how tightly matter is packed together. I gathered seven in liquids from in my pantry under my sink and that's all i i had honey corn syrup dish soap vinegar and water and vegetable and olive i mean olive and canola oil what happened was the honey sank to the bottom because it was den more dense. Then went the corn syrup, then it was the dish soap, then the water and the vinegar mixed together because they were the same density and so did the olive and canola oil. I had fun doing my experiment. Race the rainbow. Which color of the rainbow will get to the other side fastest? What is already known? Skittles dissolve in water and the colors travel through the water. Hypothesis. I think the yellow will dissolve the fastest because it's the lightest color and it's a primary color. Tests. Test 1. We lined up all the Skittles and poured in the water, then waited until one of them reached the finish line. It was a tie. Test 2. We lined up more Skittles, poured in water, and waited. Yellow 1!
Test one. And test two. Conclusion. The fastest color overall was yellow. My hypothesis was correct. Yellow was the fastest maybe because of slider, but it was fun testing it out. Hi, I'm Marley. Hi, I'm Stella. We're doing a Girl Scout experiment. Our experiment is to blast up a rocket into the air and see how much time it takes to come back down. We, we are not going to change the amount of water, but we are going to change how much fuel, fuel we use each time. Is that half? That's good, Stella. Okay, so how much water do we need to use every single time? That's, oops, that's going to be 10, 15, 20. Okay. So how much, Stella? 20. Good. Hi, my name is Sophie from Troop 64125, and my project is which tape was better of the rip on the box. What I know about these two boxes is, and tape, is that I know the tape is the most helpful tape and most strongest tape because I see it being used a lot in emergencies. That's how I know. It's one of the most important ones. And my hypothesis is I think packing tape will win because uh, I've seen it being used a lot. Not really much of um, masking tape a lot. Not really. And I tested it out and I saw that my hypothesis was right. Packing tape. Packing tape one. So, when you hit it, it doesn't move. But you can cut it more easily. So, that's why packing tape one. Thank you for watching. My name's Elena, and my experiment is Fluffy Soap. 
You for this experiment, you need a bar of soap and a and a uh, microwave. This is my control. My, this is my first experiment. Thirty seconds. First ex second experiment. One minute. And third experiment. Two minutes. And each time they got bigger and bigger. This is just regular. This it got it just got a little like bigger. This one is big, but this one is even bigger. And then once you finish doing it, you it's fun to play with. And that's my experiment. Hi, I'm Alexandra, and I'm a brownie. My council is Greater Los Angeles. My experiment, We Think What You Drink, shows the effects of soda on the teeth. The eggs represent the teeth, and I thought the light sodas would um, just color Sprite to light soda, and it didn't color. Um, crushed orange is a light soda, and it made gross a joke. Even though Diet Coke has no sugar, it's still got dyed a lot and made a ring around it. The conclusion is. Soda does negative effects on the teeth, and um, crushed orange is the worst. Thanks for learning with me. Bye. Hi, my name's Alexa, and I'm a brownie. What is your project about? Soda. Hey. Uh, what is your project about, Alexa? Hydropower. What kind of ha, what is hydropower? Uh, it is energy made from moving water. And what is one type of hydropower? The water wheel. And what is a water wheel used for? To mill flour. To mill. It used to be. It used to be. And what kind of power? And what kind of energy is hydropower? Renewable energy. Where's that going to be? And who has the largest hydropower facility? China. All right. Are you ready to go show them your demonstration? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Show them. Okay. You're good. Just move it. So no, you. And there it goes. So what's making that spin? The water. So what is this again? Hydro. Power. What's your name again? Alexa. All right. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Okay, so I'm, for my science project, I'm going to put four pencils in a plastic bag full of water and see if it will pop and like all the water will fall out or if like the pencils like stay in and like the water won't come out so yeah it's <laughs> what the heck it's actually working that's weird <laughs> cool it's the pencils are going in and like no water is coming out this is cool this is actually really cool so yeah this worked Hi, my name is Nolani and I'm from Troop 50135. And today I will be showing how pepper will float away when soap hits the surface. I had missed the recording, but when the soap had hit the pepper, you can obviously see that all the pepper had floated away to the sides. And that is because pepper is so light, it just floats on top of water. 
So when the soap is introduced, it breaks the surface, causing it to flatten and making the pepper float away from that surface. Hello everybody. So I'm going to show you how to take ice and salt and try to take the salt and melt the ice. And I'm going to add some food coloring because I think it's fun. So what you do is you take your ice, pinch it a little bit, and sprinkle it around the ice and then and then choose whatever color food coloring you want first i'm going to use blue because i like blue all right so i'm going to squirt it on of where the ice where the ice where the salt is you can see that the ice is melting the the salt is melting the ice and it makes tiny little cracks if you, and if you even put more salt on you can see it goes more faster because the ice is melting and the the salt is causing the ice to melt so then I'm just adding some food coloring so you can actually see it really perfectly and you can and you can see the tiny little Hi my name is Alejandra and my name is Valentina. Today we will be doing 20 questions 20 seconds Questions Does antibacterial soap remove germs? Does normal soap do the same thing? Our hypothesis, we think that antibacterial soap will remove the germs and that normal soap will not get rid of the germs. Materials, two Q-tips, uh, one, one half teaspoon of black pepper for two bowls, antibacterial soap, normal soap, and one half cup of water per bowl. Procedure, place the two bowls on, place the two empty bowls on the table. Pour in one half, one half a cup of water per bowl. Get one Q-tip and dip it in the antibacterial soap. Put your put that aside and put your put your one half one half teaspoon black pepper into the bowls of the first serving. Count how many seconds it takes to to separate. Do the same thing with the normal soap. Conclusion. My sister and I learned that antibacterial soap does get rid of all the germs and that normal soap does not do anything. Don't forget to wash your hands for 20 seconds. Wear a face, wear a mask, and practice social distancing. Bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Azalea from Troop. Five zero one three five. I'm going to test what sugar snake will grow bigger using lighter fluid or spirit. I'm going to mix one part baking soda, four part sugar. sugar snake will grow bigger using the lighter fluid or the spirit? I think the spirit. Yeah. And now the other one? Both. The one over here is lighter fluid and the one over here is spirit. I think to add more solution to it, but the lighter fluid worked better and it also looked like a castle. My hypotheses were wrong. Hi, my name is Barbara and today we're going to see what happens when you add water to crazy snow. Let's see. Whoa! What happened?
happens when we add more water? Wow. Add some more water to see if it expands more. Whoa. Now when you touch it, it feels completely dry. Did you know these are the same crystals inside a baby diaper? That's why it holds up so much liquid and the baby stays dry. These crystals can hold up to 200 times its weight. Thanks for watching. Bye! Hi, I'm Natalia, Natalia from um, Vanny Girl Scout from Getaway Council of North Florida, Chip 73002. Animal Research Project Guinea Pigs. Guinea Pigs came from the Andes, Mount, the Andes Mountain in South America. What do guinea pigs eat? Guinea pigs eat grass, hay, and some types of fruits and vegetables. Uh, good food for guinea pigs. Apples, oranges, cucumbers, strawberries, cucumbers, bell peppers, carrots. Bad food for guinea pigs. Onion, mushroom, corn, meat, potato, nuts, and avocado. What do guinea, guinea pigs need as a pet? Large cage, a friend to play with, food and water, bedding and toys, no rolling and balls because it is bad for their backs. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sydney and today I am a junior troop from 61229 and I am doing density of oil. So what you're going to need to do this experiment is you're going to need a glass of water. Doesn't matter how tall. You need a glass of water and a little tiny bit of oil. So you're going to pour the oil in the water. So you see water and oil don't mix. So and then you get your food coloring. You get your food colored and you put as many drops as you want. Then you slowly mix. You slowly mix. And then this is your result. You should get some cool floating drops. I like to order at your sponsor's tickets. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm going to be doing a kids versus adults experiment. In this experiment, I am putting adults and kids' brains to the test, and I found out that they both have their own special features. But my question is, which brain is better? In my first experiment called Reaction Time, you can see that, that the kids are victorious. In this experiment, there was a red button that turned green at any moment. The people had exactly half a second to turn that button red again by pressing it. Kids were victorious because when you turn 24, your reaction time slowly starts to decline, making adults' reaction time over half a second. My second experiment is called languages. And when this experiment, kids were victorious again because when we are babies, we know every single language. But then, when we become older, our brains are wired to speak the language we hear. So when we are kids, we still have some of those wires that make it easier for kids to learn languages. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Skittles or M&M's dissolve faster. 
by Kira S. and I'm a cadet in Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia. What do we already know? M&M's are chocolate. Chocolate can melt at temperatures just beneath the average human body temperature, and Skittles can dissolve as they are, while M&M's dissolve the outer layer, then the inner chocolate layer. Hypothesis. My hypothesis was that M&M's will dissolve faster because they're made up of mainly chocolate on the inside, and Skittles are only made up of one thing. Designing my study, I set up two plates, one with M&M's and one with Skittles, and I poured water in at the same time in both of the plates, and we stopped it once one beat the other to see which one dissolves faster. Here's some photos. At the top, you can see that M&M's was a little in the lead, and then as it progressed, Skittles beat M&M's by a lot. Collecting the data, so m and started out but slowed down, and Skittles started out behind but continued at a constant pace. Analyzing the data, so here's a chart I made, and it shows basically what happened 10 seconds in, 30 seconds in, a minute in, and 2 minutes in. Conclusion. Skittles dissolve at a rapid pace, and m and have a thin layer between the color and the chocolate that dissolves very slowly. That's why they say they melt in your mouth. My name is Sophia McGarity. I am a Daisy. The poster I'm doing is the water cycle. It's been raining at my house lately. It runs off my roof, then it turns to a puddle. It dries up or evaporates, then goes up the sky, and then turns to a cloud. Hello, my name is Emery, and I am a brownie in troop 24307. My experiment, experiment was color changing milk. My, my materials that I used was milk, dish soap, and food coloring in a Q-tip. What I did is I poured milk on a plate and then I put food coloring in the middle. And then I put some soap on the Q-tip and I touched the Q-tip on, on the food coloring and the milk. Then the, the food coloring expanded and the, with the milk. Why did it expand? Because of... Surface tension. The surface tension was higher, the milk sur surfer tension was higher than the food coloring, so it made the food coloring and the milk expand. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I did a good job in this one. Hi, my name is Colette. I'm a cadet Girl Scout in the Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest Unit. My experiment is Epsom salt crystal. My question was, do Epsom salt crystals grow better on pipe cleaner or on string? What I already knew was that the fast growing method of Epsom salt crystals grows crystals faster. The pipe cleaner has more surface on it than the string, and you can grow crystals using Epsom salt. My hypothesis was, I think that the crystals will grow better on the pipe cleaner because there's more surface for them to attach onto. Um, 
What I did was I mixed Epsom salt with warm water into two glass jars and added food coloring. Then I put the pipe clean and the string into the glass jars and I put the jars into the refrigerator overnight. Then I took the jars out of the refrigerator to check to see if the crystals formed. Um, the amount of crystals formed on the pipe cleaner was two inches. And the amount of crystals formed on the string was only one inch. My conclusion was more crystals formed on the pipe cleaner than on the string because the pipe cleaner had more surface. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ava McCallick and I am a Brent Scout and this is my little sister Charlotte McCallick. She is a Daisy Scout. We are from Troop 61229. Today we are going to be extracting DNA from a strawberry. For this experiment we are going to need um, three cups of water, extra cups of extra cups, three plastic knives, coffee filters, soap, um, strawberries, plastic bags, Ziploc bags, three different types of salts, um, salt, water, sea salt, um, table, table um, salt, and um, kosher salt. Our goal in this experiment is to see if different types of salts can produce different amounts of DNA. You get, get a cup of water and then get the soap and then pour a little bit inside. And then get the salt and pour a little bit inside. And then put it to the side, then get the strawberries, mush them up, and if done correctly, it should look like that. And then when you then open it up, get that, and then pour it in. And then mix it up together. Put the coffee filter in the, in the cup. Inside the coffee filter. Once you have it filtered, you're going to need cold alcohol. And then Then hold it from the top and then just start mixing it. It's hard to see, but this is the amount we extracted using table salt. 
This is the amount that we got from the sea salt. There's still more in the cup though, so. And this is what we got from the kosher salt. Overall, the kosher salt produced, per, produced the most DNA. Hi, my name's Eliana. Um, I'm going to be doing the experiment of volume of liquid. I'm going to put oil and water into these test tubes. And then I'm going to freeze them overnight and see what happens. I predict that when I put the oil and freeze it, it will go higher and when the water does, it will go lower. So now I'm going to put in the oil in this one. And I'm going to put up at least 25. And just a little more. And now I'm going to put in the water. Now I'm going to leave them overnight and see what happens. Ooh, it's cold. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to see what happens. I hope they don't explode. Here's the test tubes again. So the oil was actually at 25, so it didn't move. Water was, it didn't go to 30, but it, it, it kind of stayed at 25, but not too, and it went a little high. My prediction was wrong, but that's okay. Even though it didn't look like our liquid changed a lot, can prove they did by another test. If our solid floats, it means it has more air. All it sinks, that means it has less air. Proves that our water got bigger and our oil got smaller. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned a lot. Girl Scouts of Suffolk County in New York and uh, my experiment um, for today is to see what type of steel will light on, light on fire. My hypothesis is that the, the less gauge that it has which is the size of steel wool um, will affect how how quick it lights on fire. My hypothesis is that the thinner steel wool, which is this one, um, will light on fire faster than the thicker steel wool because it ha because the thicker steel wool has more resistance and won't walk, will not um, light on fire as quick. In this experiment, I will touch a nine volt battery to each of the different thicknesses of steel wool and observe which one lights on fire the quickest. I'm going to start with the thickest steel wool to see what happens. Cameraman, please. Thank you. Okay. If you can see that did not do anything. That was not what I was expecting. Okay. So the next steel wool that I'm going to test is the medium, the medium grain. As you can see, the um, medium steel wool did have some sparks, but did not do a lot of sparks and did not blow up. This is the thinnest steel wool that I have that I'm going to test and let's do it. Well, I guess my hypothesis was right. The thinner the gauge, 
of the steel wool, the faster it lights on fire. Hi, I'm Peyton, and I'm going to show you the paper clip and water experiment. So, if I take this normal paper clip and drop it in, it will sink. But if I take this paper clip and bend it like this, so when it's like an L, and place another paper clip on it, and gently place it in the cup, it floats. And this technique only floats because the water su supports the paper clip while it's on the surface. Thanks for watching me do this experiment and have a nice day. Hi, I'm Amelia Gonzalez and my science and what I'm going to be using for my science experiment is a couple of food dye um, dish soap, a Q-tip, and some milk. So, what you're going to do is you're going to put the milk inside the uh, in the plate. Then you add a couple of food drops or food dye, whatever you call them. And I'm using greenish, green, blue, and sunset red, and and purple, green, purple red. You don't need to add a whole lot, so it should be looking like that. And you're gonna put you you don't need a lot of dish soap, probably like that. Um, you put the Q-tip in the dish soap. You don't need a lot, like probably about that. Then you, sorry, doing like that, like that, and then see how it went, like boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and it kind of like looks like a marble, but different colors. So that's my science experiment, so bye. Hi, my name is Alana. I am a cadet from Girl Scouts Harbor Central, California. Today, I will be showing you how capillary action works through walking rainbows. First, you will need four cups of water with red food coloring, yellow food coloring, blue food coloring, and violet purple food coloring. Next, you will need three empty cups. Next, you will need trifle paper towel folded into each individual cup. Now, since it will take a few hours, this is what it would look like. Thanks for watching! I'm doing the elephant toothpaste experiment and I'm gonna see which one goes longer, less yeast or the exact amount of yeast. So here I'm gonna, it's supposed to be a full teaspoon. Here I'm gonna put only half. Okay. And it's actually a tablespoon, not a teaspoon. Um, then you add this in here. And you get your mixer. And I just mix it in. Now we're adding the hydrogen peroxide. hypothesis was that the one with more yeast would stay longer. My hypothesis was wrong because the one with less stayed the, the longest.
name is Kathy Gillis, and my question was, do regular cookies and gluten-free cookies taste different? What is already known? These cookies are made from scratch, and they have the same ingredients except for the flour. Hypothesis. They will taste different because gluten-free flour is actually made of rice or something, while regular flour is made of wheat. And since they are actually made of different things, it will taste different. Find your study. A. Taste regular cookie. B. Taste gluten-free cookie. C. Tell if there's a difference. Collect your data. Gluten-free, more crumbly, and can taste sea salt. Regular, taste as good as they usually do. Six, analyze your data. Regular, tasted regular. Gluten-free, tasted different. Conclusion, they do taste different. I was correct and the cookies had a slight difference in color. Gluten did not make it taste better and gluten-free is better for you. So gluten-free is also better for you. Hi, my name is Audrey and I'm from Troop 24307. And my theme is floating Legos. And my question was, which Legos float the best? My research from a book was an object's ability to float is called buoyancy. Dis density describes how heavy or light something is for its size. I per my hypothesis was I predict that the largest big block will float because it has more trapped air. Okay, so this is the big block and it floats good. So I noticed that you can't put it like that because it'll sink. So you have to put it like that. And then this one is the smallest Lego and when you put it in, it kind of goes sideways. And so, so my prediction was right. And now when I'm gonna build a boat, I'm going to build it out of these Legos. And thanks for watching. Bye. Hello, my name is Santana, and I am a junior from 61229 Desert Southwest. Today I will be doing, I'm doing a color-changing milk experiment. You need milk, dish soap, and food coloring. And then you get some food, uh, dish soap, and you just start tapping it. Like so. And that is our experiment. Why does milk react to the soap and food coloring? Well, when the liquid dish soap is added to the milk with drops of food coloring on the surface, the soap reduces the surface tension of the milk and reacts with the fat. This interaction causes the fat particles in the milk to remove and create swirls of color. That is the end of my experiment. Bye. The question was, will the oil float in the water? What is, what do we already know? I know that the oil will go up in the water and the oil will go, get all crowded with the water, I think. Hypothesis. <clears throat> I, I thought, I thought the, the, the water would go into, I mean, I thought the oil would go into the water in only five, five seconds. Oil, water, and dye. First water, then the, the oil, and then we put in the dye. Collect our data. One ounce of water, and the oil got crowded, and it was all bubbly, and the dye did not get, get to go to the bottom. 
conclusion. The oil will go up in the water and then the dye did not go to the bottom. Hello, my name is Olivia Suter and I'm a brownie in Troop 70618 in North Olmsted, Ohio. And I wanted to know if hot and cold water mixed. We hypothesized that if we put cold water on top of hot water, the hot water will go up to the top because it is less dense, making mixing the waters. If the cold water is on bottom, the hot water will make the cold water hotter and it will mix slowly. We took four jars and filled two of them up with hot water and two of them up with cold. My, with my dad, with my mom and dad's assistance, we put the jars on top of each other. Our first set of jars, we had the hot water on the bottom and it immediately started to mix. It took about 20 seconds to turn purple. Our second set of jars had hot water on top. When we took the card out, the red and blue water stayed where they were. It took about two and a half hours for this set of jars to mix. We can conclude that this hot water is less dense than cold water. Thanks for watching.